Hello there, my name is Tenorium, and today we are playing Pizza Mori. Can't speak Italian. That may have come out completely wrong. So this is a game from uh, the Seraphim Entertainment. They did uh, Seduce Me. And their game before Seduce Me, which was exactly like Seduce Me, but without demons and stupider. First of all, I've read that this is fully voice acted. <laughs> this is visual novel voice acting. I hate tarnishing everything with the same brush, but I haven't seen it well done yet. I'm not about to find out. However, the music is done by a chap called Christopher Escalante, and I've listened to his stuff before, and he's quite talented, so I'm hoping for the music to be alright. Apparently, this is cute and fun. Funny, even. Now, I hate cute things. I obviously don't hate cute things, but apparently that's the persona I've, um, and reputation I've worked up about myself. But I do like funny things. Funny things is something I... I definitely enjoy. So, we're gonna give this a go. Without further ado, let's get cracking! Please choose your main character. Mario or Maria? Uh... I don't get to name them? God damn it, I can already see Dave and Dave at that well. If it's Italian, I guess... They do have to be called Mario or Maria. Uh, I know, should we just play as a girl? I, I really don't care about gendering in, in, in games. Uh, let's go with Maria, why not? New York City. Alright, well I'm glad we chose Maria and not Mario. New York City. The city of love, lights and pizza. Yes, pizza. Pizza isn't one of the things I remember it being famous for. New York, the Empire State Building, the Big Apple, uh, yellow cabs, an insane grid system. Those kind of things, sure. Pizza? I oh, no, I thought that was more Chicago. However, one ingredient is missing from your lavish New York slice. Love is not on the menu anymore. I mean, you can't give love to everyone. It, the restaurant would quickly turn into an orgy and then the police would come a-knocking. I am leaving you. Oh. Okay, love isn't on the menu because, uh... Well... I mean... Seemingly someone very sunburned dumped you. Let's face it, if you get to that point you're burnt to literally a crisp, I can see why he might take his anger out. But I need you in my life! I will not be part of this ridiculous deep dish fantasy. Goodbye! That is how you would break out with someone. Not saying that. We're just going to say no. As, as if we were sort of slightly disappointed, but not too disappointed. And thus, your pizza of life was utterly ruined by the rotten ingredient of heartbreak. I can see that being a problem. Whatever shall you do? I must make a pizza. My heart cries for the red passion of tomato sauce. I can see why your ex left you. This novelty would wear off very quickly. I need the taste of white creamy cheese on my tongue mixed with the spark of garlic. That's supposed to be a euphemism, isn't it? That white creamy cheese on your tongue? That, that's got to be a euphemism. The wounds of this heartbreak require me to bake the perfect pizza. And a pizza you shall make. Tonight you shall plan your perfect pizza. Hang on a second. What we're going to do, and hopefully you'll hear this, I'm going to turn the voices on. And we're going to see what it sounds like. What? It doesn't read those lines out? Oh, come on. Alright, okay. Hang on. Yeah, come on! Top quality voice acting! <laughs> I am 12, and I have a generic whiny voice! Come on! Oh, I love that voice acting! Especially with someone who's Italian. Size. <laughs> Visual novel voice acting. It's just terrible. <laughs> I've gone th um, through whole voice um, auditions with a developer friend of mine, and I swear, he was like, okay, well, uh, you need an accent. 
And the people who auditioned had got big roles in other visual novels. They couldn't even keep an accent on for the whole sentence. It changed mid-sentence. Oh, it was dreadful. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a wonderful one myself, but it doesn't take one to know one. If it's that bad. And also, oh yes, well, we need the voice of a 30-year-old woman. And that exact same voice came up, I swear. That is just every voice acting. Ah. Oh. Oh no, is this a photo with a... It has to be, doesn't it? That's a photo with a filter over it. Yeah, I'm gonna go with yes, just because of how nicely the sun is sort of lit. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just turn the music up. Just there for you. Give it a listen. I'll give you five seconds. Da -da. Okay, right, turn that back down to its original volume. Be honest, that's more French than it is Italian, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's onions around your neck as you ride through the town on a bicycle. That's not Italian. Oh well. Ah, the smell of New York mixed with the tang of smoke and tomato sauce. Living above your beloved pizzeria always had its benefits. After all, you've lived in that home ever since you were born. Your beloved grandma and grandpa had owned Pizzamore. We have to say it like that. Ever since they immigrated to America. They passed it to your daughter, your mum, and taught you everything you knew about how to make pizza with love. We're saying mum. Because if we emigrated here and our character has an American voice, that means we're American. We can't pretend you're Italian. You at least have to put it on a little bit. You have to do things like, um, live with your family at an uncomfortable age. That kind of stuff to be a proper Italian. And now you own the fine establishment beneath your feet that is Pizza Paradise. Does, did that not have a full stop at the end? That's really picky, I know, but I, I, I can help notice that, considering everything else did. As the sun rises over Times Square, you head down to Pizzamore to unlock the doors and begin your workday. After all, you'll need all the inspiration you can get to make your perfect pizza tonight. The backgrounds are all... Uh, for fuck's sake. They're, they're, they're all photos with filters on them. <laughs> Why draw such, like, an, an alright... Good sprite like this. And then... Whatever. I guess backgrounds are difficult. I cannot wait for tonight. <clears throat> However, as you went to unlock the door of your establishment, a set of fingers tapped on your shoulder. Hmm? Hello. Are you the owner of Pizzamori? How do I know their name? And why does this sound like there's a ghost in the room all of a sudden? I am, and you are? I am a mere delivery girl here to a special oven to deliver a special oven for this pizzeria. A special oven? I do not remember ordering one. Is that so? I clearly remember being instructed to bring this oven to this establishment at this very date. How odd. You don't look like much of a delivery girl. You have a very, very tight short skirt on. And you have one of those scientist coats on. What is it with this pose I keep seeing? This is in Sakura Fantasy too. Crossed arm, hand on top. That's just not a natural pose. Do that now. I know you're doing it already, but do that now. And tell me that this is a natural pose you randomly sit in. No. Oh well. Who ordered this oven? Hmm, the instructions and order were placed by, uh, Anita? My grandma? She ordered this? Yes, she also left a note. May I see this? The delivery girl passed a note from her clipboard to you and you began to read, quickly recognising your grandma's handwriting. My dear grandchild, I leave one more special gift for you, an oven. Not just any oven, however. An oven that will light a special flame for you in the pizzeria. Use it well, grandma. It really is from grandma, all right. It's her handwriting and her overly poetic writing style. I guess I can't really turn it down then. Overly poetic writing style? For you, an oven. Not just any oven, however. An oven that will light a special flame for you. Po fuck. Literacy. They weren't very good at literacy at school if that impresses them. I read through that and didn't even think, oh, poesy, of course. <laughs> I guess I can't turn it down then. 
You see, I wasn't leading you astray, now just sign here and we'll all be set. Deliver delivery girl passed a clipboard over to you, wishing you sign its release. You signed it, and the delivery girl installed the oven before going on her way. The day's just started and it's already turning out strange. Why didn't we just call the grandmother? Alright, well it's another photo with a Photoshop filter over it. Fuck's sake. You then went about your day. Surprisingly, business was better than usual. Not that your pizzeria ever has terrible business. You're known for being the best, fastest, and only one person operated pizzeria in the city. However, there were more people than usual, and they are very vocal about how much they love the pizza. <laughs> right? As you closed the shop, you noticed that you heard voices coming from the kitchen. Curious, you went to look, but there was no one. Confused, you wrote it off as you being tired and went home to bed. What? You did fucking what? You didn't grab the fire extinguisher and go, Right, if there is anyone here, you're getting clonked over the head. <sighs> Whatever. But something struck you as odd as you laid in bed. That oven was more than it seemed, and you felt it in your gut. You finally rose from your bed and headed to the pizzeria once more. Soft echoes blew through the air, undisturbed by your presence in the main era. Okay. Photos with Photoshop filters in them? Bad enough. Alright, but... Sure, I think this came out during Nano Reno because it came out on... Uh, the first of a month, or like the second or something. So I assume this came out for Nano Reno. However, this is a photo with a filter with a night filter put over it. If you're using photos, could you not possibly just get one at night? Is it really that... <sighs> Whatever. As you entered the ki- oh, the I don't appear to be any darker. As you entered your kitchen, however, the echoes wisp of whispers stopped dead, afraid to give away the owners of the voices. Who's there? Show yourselves! Stale silence repeated, leaving you to stare at the new oven in your kitchen. It couldn't have been the oven, could it? It's impossible to think of. What if it was a haunted oven? A haunted- Not even- Yeah, let's just pretend that didn't happen. I want to know how that line is read out. I'll be honest, I want to know. Let's uh, put these back up. What if it was a haunted oven? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, no, that was really well delivered. Well done. <laughs> yeah, that was um perfect. No criticism. The mere thought. <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. The mere thought made even the tomato red bandana wrapped around your head quake in fear. Oh, so now our bandana has feelings as well, does it? No, it can't possibly be haunted. What is it then? As you exclaimed to the stale silence, a sudden clang turned your head to see a fallen wooden pin roller. As well as two individuals in flowery tan clothes. Ah! Ah! Doe and Doa? They're called Doe and Doa. I assume it's a play on Dom and Dumber, but whatever. Ah! The two twins stood, quickly holding to each other in fright. As your screaming medley ended, you took inside the frightened twins. What are you both doing in my pizzeria? But please don't hurt us. We don't know how we got here. How do you not know how you got here? We merely awoke next to this beautiful oven on your floor. We've been hiding here for hours as you worked. We didn't want to disturb you, but we didn't know what to do. The look on their faces beamed with innocence and fluffy purity. Something in your heart melted. Oh good, we're naive as well. But then you recalled how the customers that day were very complimentary and were loving, were in love with your pizzas. So, hang on. Are we going to hire them now? Wait, did you two have anything to do with the pizzas I made today? No, we haven't done anything. We've been hiding the entire time. That was your one ticket out of here. Just saying. 
Now, the baseball bat's coming out. It was odd to think about it, they did nothing to help, and yet the pieces were different today? You looked into the oven, wondering if there was much more than what you bargained for with it. Bargained for? We got it for free from our grandmother! Looking back at the two twins, you can see their anxious and fearful faces, unsure of what was going to happen next. Were you going to force them out? Where, where would they go? They didn't seem to have anywhere to go. If all they did was hide in your kitchen the entire time. You decided to let them stay. They obviously weren't lying to you, didn't seem to know where they were or how they got here, and you have been lonely since the breakup after all. This sounds like something I'm only doing because I'm a nervous train wreck. We're going to wake up and this is all going to be a dream or something silly, right?